all met. Here's a marvelous, convenient place for our rehearsal. And we will do it in action as we will do it before the Duke. Madam Quince. What sayest thou, Bully Bottom? There are things in this comedy of Pyramus and Thisbe that will never please. First, Pyramus must draw a sword to kill himself, which the ladies cannot abide. How answer you that? By our lady, a parlous fear. I believe we must leave the killing out when all is done. Not a whit. I have a device to make all well. Write me a prologue, and let the prologue seem to say we will do no harm with our swords, and that Pyramus is not killed indeed. And for the more better assurance, tell them that I, Pyramus, am not Pyramus, but Bottom the Weaver. This will put them out of fear. Well, we will have such a prologue. Will not the ladies be afeard of the lion? I fear it, I promise you. Masters, you ought to consider with yourselves, for to bring in, God shield us, a lion among ladies is a most dreadful thing, for there is no more fearful wildfowl than your lion living, and we ought to look to it. Therefore, another prologue must tell he is not a lion. Nay, you must name his name. And... Half his face must be seen through the lion's neck, and he himself must speak through, saying thus, or to the same defect. Ladies. No. Fair ladies. I would wish you. No. I would request you. No. I would entreat you not to fear, not to tremble my life for yours. If you think I come hither as a lion, it were pity of my life. No. I am no such thing. I am a man, as other men are. And there indeed you must name his name and tell them plainly. He has snug the joiner. Well, it shall be so. But there is two hard things. That is, to bring the moonlight into a chamber. For you know Pyramus and Thisbe meet by moonlight. Doth the moon shine the night we play our play? A calendar. A calendar. Look in the almanac. Find out moonshine. Find out moonshine. Yes, it does shine that night. Why then, you may leave a casement of the great chamber window where we play open, and the moon may shine in at the casement. Aye, or else one must come in with a lanthorn and a bush of thorns and say he comes to disfigure or to present the person of moonshine. Then there is another thing. We must have a wall in the great chamber for Pyramus and Thisbe, says the story, do talk through the chink of a wall. <laughs> you can never bring in a wall. What say you, Bottom? Some man or other must present wall. And let him have some plaster or some mulm or some rough cast about him to signify wall and let him hold his fingers thus, and through that cranny shall Pyramus and Thisbe whisper. If that may be, then all is well. Come, sit down, every mother's son, and rehearse your parts. Pyramus, you begin. When you have spoken your speech, enter into that break. And so everyone according to his cue. What? A play tour? <laughs> I'll be an auditor. An actor too, perhaps, if I see cause. Speak, Pyramus. This beat. Stand forth. <coughs> this be the flowers of odious savors, sweet odors, 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 odors. Savors sweet, so hath thy breath, my dearest Thisbe dear. But hark! A voice! Stay thou, but hear a while, and by and by I will to thee appear. A stranger Pyramus than e'er played here. Must I speak now? Ay, Mary, must you. For you must understand that he goes but to see a noise that he heard, and is to come again. Most radiant pyramids, most holy, what if you of color like the red rose, our triumphant friar, most prestigious of all, and most lovely. 
loved you. As true as true as hope they would never tire out the need pyramids and it is too. Nimbus is too, man. Why, you must not speak that yet. That you answer to Pyramus. You speak all your parts at once, cues and all. Pyramus, answer, your cue is past. It is never tire. As true as true as Horace and yet would never tire. If I were fair, Sisley, oh. I were only thine. Oh, monstrous! Oh, strange! We are hiding! Bring out this fight! Masters, help! I'll follow you. I'll lead you about and around through fog, through bush, through break, through briar. <laughs> Why did they run away? This is unnavery of them to make me a feared. Oh, bottom! Thou art changed! What do I see on thee? What do you see? You see an ass head of your own, do you? Yeah! Bless thee, bottom! Bless thee, thou art translated! I see their knavery. This is to make an ass of me. To fright me if they could. But I will not stir from this place. Do what they can. I will... walk up and down here and... I will sing. But they will hear I am not afraid. Yeah. Lord Almighty, I feel my temperature rising. Ooh. Burning, burning, it's burning through to my soul. Mm -hmm. Girl, 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 you gonna set me on fire. Mm -hmm. My brain is flaming, I don't know which way to go. Ooh. What angel wakes me from my flowery bed? <laughs> Cause your kisses will lift me higher. Like a sweet song of a choir You light my morning sky high in burning love mm -hmm. Just a hunk of hunk of burning love Ooh. Hunk of hunk of burning love Ooh. Hunk of hunk of burning love Ooh. Hunk of hunk of hunk of I pray thee gentle mortal Sing again Mine ear is much enamored of thy note so is mine eye enthralled to thy shape, and thy fair virtue's force perforce doth move me on the first view to say, to swear, I do love thee. <laughs> Methinks, mistress, you should have little reason for that. <clears throat> and yet to say the truth, reason and love keep little company together nowadays. <laughs> the more the pity some honest neighbors will not make them friends. <laughs> Nay, I can weep upon occasion. Thou art as wise as thou art beautiful. <laughs> not so neither. <laughs> but if I had wit enough to get myself out of this wood, I had wit enough to serve mine own turn. Out of this wood do not desire to go. Thou shalt remain here whether thou wilt or no. I am a spirit of no common rate. The summer still doth tend upon my state. And I do love thee. Therefore, go with me. I will give thee fairies to attend on thee. And they shall fetch thee jewels from the deep. And sing while thou on pressed flowers dost sleep. And I will purge thy mortal grossness so that thou shalt, like an airy spirit, go. Peace blossom, cobweb, moth, and mustard seed. Ready? And I. And I. And I. Where, Where shall, shall we go? go? Be kind and courteous to this gentleman. Hop in his walks and gamble in his eyes. Feed him with apricots and dewberries. Green uh, grapes, purple figs, and mulberries to have my love to bed and to arise and pluck the wings from painted butterflies to fan the moonbeams from his sleeping eyes. Nod to him else and do him courtesy. Hail, mortal. Hail. 
Help. Help. <laughs> I cry, your worship's mercy heartily. <laughs> I beseech your worship's name. Cobweb. I shall desire your more good acquaintance, Mistress Cobweb. If I cut my finger, I shall make bold with you. <laughs> your name, little lady? Peace Blossoms. I pray you commend me to Mistress Squash, your mother, and Master Peace Card, your father. <laughs> I shall desire your more good acquaintance, too, Mistress Peace Blossom. <laughs> your name, I beseech you, Mistress. Mustard Seed. Good, Mistress Mustard Seed. I know your patience well. That same cowardly giant like Oxbeef hath devoured many a gentleman of your house. I promise you, your kindred have made my eyes water here now. I so desire your more good acquaintance too, Mistress Mustard Seed. Come, wait upon him. Lead him to my bower. The moon, methinks, looks with a watery eye. Tie up my love's tongue. Bring him silently.